those colors are pretty fantastic. Hi, Russ of Aquarimax here. Are bumblebee millipedes the best pet invertebrate? Well, today, after a brief introduction to this species, we'll talk about housing and care, and then go into the pros and cons of keeping this millipede so that you can make the decision yourself. The bumblebee millipede is a native of Jamaica and possibly some nearby areas, and it's been introduced into southern Florida. The scientific name is Anadenobolus monilicornis. Now, this species is fairly small. A large specimen is a little over two inches long, but what it lacks in size, it makes up for largely in coloration. And there's little doubt why it's called a bumblebee millipede with this um, fantastic patterning and color. So let's talk a little bit about housing and care for the bumblebee millipede. Bumblebee millipedes, since they're fairly small, don't need a lot of space, but they're also likely to breed, and so you'll want some space to allow for expansion. So a six-quart Sterilite tub is a great size for a moderately sized colony of bumblebee millipedes, but there are many other sizes and shapes you could use. A nice thing about this Sterilite tub is that it doesn't seal tightly, and so it will provide sufficient ventilation even if you don't drill it. Uh, they don't require excessive amounts of ventilation. You could you know, drill a hole or two in this enclosure and then either in the lid or on the sides or both and then cover that with some fine fabric like chiffon, but not entirely necessary as long as the lid doesn't seal tightly. Substrate is one of the most important considerations as it is for all millipedes. And like I said, you want a depth of substrate that is a little deeper than the length of the millipede, ideally. If you want to learn more about uh, substrate for millipedes, I have a video that goes into more detail about that. But basically I use a mix of one-third organic compost, one-third decaying hardwood leaves, and one-third pellets of alder or oak, which are sold for use with uh, meat smokers. And you soak those pellets in water until they reach the consistency of wet sawdust and mix that with the compost and the leaves. And then I add some ground uh, eggshell for calcium. That substrate works really well for them. In terms of care, you want to make sure that the substrate is moist enough that when you squeeze it in your hand, you feel some moisture, but you're not able to squeeze drops of water out. If you can do that, it's too moist. You want to get somewhere in that vicinity. It's okay to have one side of the enclosure, and often a benefit to have one side of the enclosure a little more moist than another side. That allows the millipedes to regulate their own moisture needs. And one of the best ways to do that is to get some sphagnum moss, moisten it and keep that on one side of the enclosure and just keep that damp at all times and let the other end of the enclosure dry out a little bit. And that is something that's commonly done for isopods. It works very well for these millipedes as well. Now, the millipedes will feed upon the substrate. That is their main food just as with uh, most millipedes and isopods. However, they do appreciate other uh, food sources as well, supplemental foods, and most vegetables can work. Things like zucchini and squash are, are good options. Um, grated carrot can work as well, and there are many other things you can offer. Fruits as well, things like mango or apple, they will eat. So you have a lot of options in terms of what you can offer as supplemental foods, you can you don't have to limit yourself to those foods either. You can offer uh, fish food pellets. You can offer most isopod and, and millipede foods that are commercial. So things like rapashi bug burger, rapashi morning wood, are are also good items that they will eat. So again, not entirely necessary to do that very often, but if you offer a supplemental food item once or twice a week, your millipedes will eat it, and they will probably end up breeding faster because of that. Uh, Temperature-wise, it's really important to note that these millipedes are a little bit more sensitive than a lot of isopods and millipedes that are kept in the hobby. A lot of them are just fine at room temperatures, and if you're comfortable, and even if you get a little cool, they're fine. But these are a tropical millipede species, and they do need it to be a little bit warm. Um, if you get a steady temperature that's lower than 72 degrees Fahrenheit, you're probably going to get some die off of this species. It's not necessarily going to destroy your whole colony, but you'll probably get some die off. And if it gets much cooler than that, you could have a problem. So try to make sure that in the winter, the temperature is at least 72 degrees Fahrenheit 
and then in the summer it can get you know into the 80s maybe the mid 80s would be kind of pushing it you don't want to get it too warm but I would say the ideal temperature range for these is somewhere between 72 and 82 Fahrenheit and if it gets a little bit higher once in a while a little bit lower once in a while it's going to be okay but any steady temperatures higher or lower than that are probably an issue now a lot of people ask how should I heat a millipede should I use a heat lamp should I put an under tank heater no uh, neither of those are going to be good options for millipedes because a heat lamp will tend to dry out the substrate and they do need a decent amount of humidity and an under tank heater is a problem because when the millipedes feel too warm they will tend to dig down and then they will encounter that under tank heater which will make them even hotter and they can die so rather than do that if you do need to provide some supplemental heating and I would urge you to try to find ways to find a warmer place in your house keep them higher up on a shelf where the temperature is going to be a few degrees warmer something like that is better uh, just use a warm room you know these are these are options that are better for heating your millipede but if you absolutely need to use a heat source on your millipede enclosure I would recommend a small um, heat mat and a thermostat on the back of the enclosure and then maybe set it for uh, well you'd have to experiment a little bit with your particular conditions but if you set the temperature around 80 Fahrenheit then even if the millipedes encounter it they're directly touching up against the side of the enclosure where the heat mat is it's not going to harm them but it should increase the ambient temperature in the enclosure a little bit um, something like that if it's on a thermostat would uh, be appropriate and then they're not going to try to bury themselves and encounter that heat source and cause themselves damage but once again try to keep the room warm or keep it higher in the room so that it's warmer is a, is a much better option if you have that available to you and really that's about it for housing and care the substrate should be changed out every three to six months because these millipedes are big eaters and you can know that it's time to start changing the substrate when you look at the surface of the substrate and you see that it is mostly frass and that means that the millipedes have ingested and excreted the uh, the substrate and left it in a little pellets and if most of what you see is in that state then you definitely need to change out the substrate um, you can also refresh the substrate to some extent meaning if you see that they've eaten a lot of the leaves and so on you can add more on the surface but eventually you will need to change it out and like I said that, that's something you want to do every three to six months just about now that's really just about it for care except for breeding we haven't really covered that so let's jump into breeding uh, bumblebee millipedes the good news is that if you just follow the care instructions that I just provided your bumblebee millipedes will almost certainly breed as long as you have at least one male and one female the easiest way to do that honestly with this species is just to get a small group start out with half a dozen and you're almost guaranteed to have at least one male and female in there and so you can get them uh, started as a colony uh, there are a couple of things you need to keep in mind in terms of breeding one is that the eggs are small yellow and about the size of the head of a pin very small fairly easy to miss and the uh, very small juveniles are tiny sort of curved uh, pale things that you might mistake for something else so make sure not to throw anything out in fact the easiest way to make sure that you do not throw out uh, eggs or very small juvenile millipedes is when you change the substrate do not discard it in fact the easiest way to remove substrate from a millipede enclosure in general is just to split the colony into two by removing half of the substrate placing it in a new enclosure and then making up that other half in both the old and the new enclosures with new substrate and now you have two colonies instead of one that is the easiest way to do it without losing anything because uh, that substrate for the next two or three months after you remove it could possibly produce baby millipedes so it's not something you would want to discard outside that could be a problem too and it's not something you want to throw away because you could be losing your millipedes so just keep that substrate in a separate enclosure for a few months and then check it to see if there are any young millipedes in it and so that's about it for care housing and breeding I just want to take a few moments to thank our patrons at patreon your support is amazing it really makes a difference in what we can do with the channel and we're really excited for what we'll be able to do based on the assistance that you provide 
So thank you very much for your support, and I want to thank everyone who supports this channel in any way, because even just watching the channel makes a difference. Thank you, everyone. So let's talk about the pros and cons of this species as a pet. First of all, this species is a pretty low maintenance pet, a pretty easy starter millipede. There are relatively few pets in the world that can be left alone for a week without any maintenance at all, and this is one of those. As long as you, everything is the way it should be in the enclosure, you've properly maintained the substrate, the humidity levels and everything, you can generally do that as long as temperatures are going to be appropriate without having to worry about it at all. So, super low maintenance. Of course, we've already mentioned the coloration, and they really are pretty hard to beat in terms of coloration. It's a great starter millipede, and it tends to be appealing to a lot of people who might not otherwise be very fond of invertebrates. I've found that when I do bug presentations of various species of arthropods, that this species is a crowd pleaser. They just, they like it a lot. And uh, it is a, a really fun, colorful, easy species, hard to beat as a, as a starter millipede, or just a millipede if you want to get into breeding millipedes a little bit. They're fairly readily available, and they're not very expensive. So what's not to like? But let's talk about the disadvantages or drawbacks of this particular species of millipede. Well, one is that they are very uh, small in terms of pet millipedes. A lot of people like a millipede to be a little larger. Uh, an ivory millipede, especially a female, is considerably larger than uh, more girthy and a little longer too, probably about twice as long as a bumblebee millipede. But there are millipedes that get a lot bigger, like Spirostreptus species one, for example. Uh, so it's, it's not a really big millipede. If, if size is something that's really important for your millipedes, then this is probably not a species you want to, to get. Another drawback is that they do require you know, fairly warm temperatures. If, like I mentioned before, if the temperature is going to be a lot lower than 72 degrees Fahrenheit for long periods of time in your house, then you'll probably need to make some sort of accommodation to regulate the temperature. Um, there's another one too. The aposematic coloration or warning coloration of this millipede advertises that there's something distasteful or toxic about it, and that is this repugnatorial fluid. If the millipede feels threatened, if it's handled roughly or if it's surprised or, or so on, it will produce this sort of liquid that has a sort of a medicine-y or chemical smell to it, and the chemical can stain your hands, and if you wash it off very quickly after it's applied, it probably won't have a stain, but otherwise it's going to stain your hands in that spot for probably a few days. And of course to predators, it's a distasteful material. Uh, I've never tasted it, and I do not recommend that anybody do so, but I imagine it's, it's pretty distasteful. And that's about it. It doesn't seem to be particularly dangerous. I've never had any sort of irritation resulting from it, and millipedes that have been handled frequently and are handled gently tend not to produce the substance. So not a big worry. Of course, different people react differently to everything, so be careful and always wash your hands after it happens and whenever you handle your millipedes, as you should anyway. But other than that, it's not a big drawback. Uh, and I guess one more thing that's kind of a universal with all millipedes is that millipede substrate can uh, attract fungus gnats. And I do have a video on how to control fungus gnats, so you can check that out if you'd like to. And that is really about it. They're a fairly inexpensive, really easy, very colorful millipede, a little on the small side. So what do you think? Are bumblebee millipedes the best pet invertebrate? Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching today. I post videos every Wednesday and Friday, all on aquarium and vivarium pets. Please feel free to share, rate, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then click the bell icon so you don't miss my next video.